Here is a beautiful image of Alex Gleason's 1892 New Standard Map of the World that was on projection at Modern College in Blackheath, England. I want to put into something. I want to put something into people's mind. Okay. Now, on the outside of these map, inside, just inside the red, if you take that and join it together, you would have a sphere. And being the opposing Arctic. It states at the top of the map that it is scientifically and practically correct. The way Gleason's map significantly differs from standard maps of the world is in its representation of the poles. Now see, to stop their illusion, I need to point out something here. And that's this part of the map because inside the red was this all spread out to be the outside. Now, this part here, have they lowered the things to make it look like, but the essence, they took a side view. This is what they normally place things as, okay? So you cannot get the whole world at this view. So they make maps, you can get the whole world view. As you can see by comparison with a conventional world map, the primary difference in Gleason's map is that the North Pole is actually situated in the center of the Earth, and upon first glance, the South Pole, or what is known as Antarctica, appears to be missing. Upon closer inspection, however, you realize that Antarctica is indeed present and makes up the majority of landmass on the map. Antarctica in Gleason's map is an encompassing ice ring that covers the entire outer reaches of Earth. Gleason's map has become somewhat of a canonical historical document for flat earthers. Many often reposting the image on the internet and heralding it as solid proof that refutes the heliocentric model of the Earth. Or in other words, proving that the Earth is not a spinning globe in space, but a circular, flat and stationary plane. This was not enough proof for me. And while I gravitated towards the idea of a giant encompasses an ice wall as a neat concept, I knew that we had a vast amount of evidence proving the existence of space, spherical planets, and entire sciences dedicated to solving the mathematical conundrums of physics. I mean, we landed on the moon for God's sake. Surely, if the Earth was flat and stationary, then somebody would have realized by now. These now, this is the important thing about it. Because they're going to use NASA to say, oh, they lied, they lied. Well, yeah, they did. They lied a whole bu a bunch. But that doesn't mean they did not go to the moon. And hiding all their scientific uh, data that they say they lost just adds to the deception. Why? Well, because they needed NASA to collect money for their project through the taxes. Now, remember, NASA was built by the paperclip file scientists from Hitler's uh, group. So, they, so the scientists were brought over to NASA for their uh, rockets and their medical, the experiments they did on people. But uh, they made two big industries in North America for this. Okay. Um, they made NASA and the unhealthy medical system, which we're dealing with uh, both in attacks uh, NASA with the space aliens and the unhealthy medical system with the uh, mixing iron with clay. Now, when I say that mixing iron with clay, there's something very important. Um, 
in scriptures, and, I, and I'm not going to go to it now because I want to stay on this and focus on this. But it says it causes both great and small to take the mark of the beast. And the key word there is causes. So whatever causes, whatever that is, it's not what follows in the statement them to accept the mark of the beast. So what's the cause? The cause is obviously not accepting the word of God or changing the word of God so people cannot understand salvation. And this is also what we're dealing with today, big time. And that's when it says the great big fall or the great falling away. And uh, we're at the doorstep. These souls did the unthinkable. They flew to the moon, they landed, took their first cautionary steps and planted the American flag. Okay, yes, a lot of this was staged. Yes, why? So they can collect more money to put towards their alternative goal. The space alien invasion. Okay, what they're showing us in technology is not the level of technology they have. That's why they build the space station so they can do things where people can't find out. NASA sent multiple crews to the moon on subsequent Apollo missions. They even managed to film Apollo 17 leaving the moon. Four days, four days. Four days. Get your arm is okay, I'm gonna get the pro. And this is what they need a television for, okay? Now, they're using a lot of, a lot of logic to show NASA lied. But that doesn't mean the earth is flat. Why do they not just go and stay with how they know the earth is flat? Because flat earth maps were navigational over all views. Nine, proceeded. Three, two, one. Houston. Right away, Houston. That's your good. That's but wait, hot. hold on. If this is footage of the crew leaving the moon and making the journey back to Earth, then who did they leave behind to film their craft take off? And wait, don't you think those colorful missions on takeoff look kind of fake? I haven't seen any subsequent rockets produce these sort of dazzling colors. And I suppose they did admit that they had lost all their data from the mission. But maybe that was just coincidence. I started looking into NASA a bit more closely, and what I found was shocking. I can say with certainty that NASA is indeed lying to the world. Now this is very interesting. And like I say, logos tell the story. So they put the round whatever space there for their overall view. Sorry about the lighting, it's uh there we go. Okay, it's not a world. It's just a view of the space. Okay, and what's this white thing here? Well, it's got the sperm head and the tail. And there's no procreation in heaven. So how do they keep procreation? Through the false alien story. And how do you know? Because it's a lie, right? And the split tongue of the serpent. It has been lying ever since it's founded in 1958. But don't take my word for it. Sometimes you can't tell people the truth. You have to show them. So let me show you. Buckle up and sit tight because Houston, we have a big problem. Okay, well, um... There's a big... All right, folks. Whoops. Okay. Now, what I'm saying is uh, they don't uh, stay on a, a, a on a clear line because, yes, NASA's lying, and that's the fall guy. Okay? He said, oh, NASA lied, and then the, they took all this, and this is the true story, the onion peel. 
where we go one we go all that were the that was the uh the the angels that mated with uh, flesh and knew they were going to get punished for it but they had to do that to make their nephilim children to help the nephilim children to help them build what they needed to build to try and uh, get out of judgment okay it's very deep all this but through the little videos that I uh, have put together I try and focus on one thing for retention rather than throw a whole bunch of different things at you at once. But I've got a video here I gotta make up. Um, it's gonna blow people's mind. And I'm gonna have to use Jonathan Kleck's uh, teachings to show that he received my writings, Sermon on the Web, Let My People Go, once, two, and three, Genesis 1 and 2, and John 1, 1 through 17. And if you understand what those re uh, writings are, and look at Jonathan's videos, he follows that teaching. But the difference between Jonathan is he uses all this pictorial stuff that the second commandment said not to because he's an artist that's his life that's his foundation that's what he knows but what Jonathan Kleck is doing is he's the merchant just like a lot of these other people who try and join up with you get your information and then they take it and sell it but the key thing to think about is Jesus said, freely given or freely received, freely given. And you're not supposed to collect for the word of God. Now, donations are understandable. Like I'm in a position right now, I might have to think about taking donations. I've been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. But I put my time 24 seven into scripture and the events that are happening into the world and matching them with scripture. That's what I do. Otherwise, feed me and sleep. I can't afford to keep on going this way. The Lord has totally allowed me to do this for the last, oh, six years. But the money's running out and I got to figure out what's going on. Uh, I've got to sell everything and uh, use that. But I still need a base for my uh, teachings. So I'm trying to find a church where I can uh, be a groundsman or something like that and do all my work there. But I don't like, <laughs> well, let's just say the churches don't like me because I, I, I don't comply to their teachings. I, I comply to the scripture. That's the battle I'm dealing with. That's the battle I've been dealing with for 20 years now. And when they start destroyed me, my family, um, well, I'll have to put a video out for my, uh, my story. But anyways, this is getting too long for me, video, and I will have to continue on. But Jonathan receives my writings. He started teaching that, but with the serpent seed doctrine added to it. And when I realized what Jonathan was doing, that's when he uh, blocked me from his channels and all this stuff. But he was hypnotizing me for information. And um, with the Lord's will, this will come out and uh, show who Jonathan Kleck really is because he is a fraud and a scam and a false prophet.
and I give you my word on that. Um, though he, the Lord may be working through Jonathan, because obviously I thought Jonathan was was a, a good instructor at one time uh, when he was doing the uh, oh the Mayan calendar and all that stuff, uh, and he got my attention when I was giving him my information. And then uh, Jonathan changed his teachings to this when he started bringing out John 10, 35, well, 34 to 38, but uh, Palms 82, 6 through 8. Um, he's not using 2 Corinthians 4, 4 and 5 or uh, 2 Peter 3 either. But... The explanation of this is done through Genesis 1, 2, Job 38, 30, um, Jude, that Job 38, the whole chapter. Like, this is all engraved in my head, all these teachings, because it gives you the answer of the scriptures. But when you separate Genesis 1, 2, and say they're two different human creations, man creations, and implement the serpent seed doctrine, you're changing the scripture. Okay. Um, Elohim, Jehovah. But I tell everybody, get on the app Parallel Plus. Put up seven Bibles. Alternative, King James, the Hebrew, whatever you want. And look at Exodus 6, 3. And you'll understand one of the seeds Satan planted to confuse the masses. The Bible says, and his name will be uh, Jesus. God with us. Emmanuel. So why all these other names? Oh, they're speaking other languages. Well, then speak the, the scripture in that language too. Don't use half a language because that's how Satan confuses. That's the baby step of uh, putting the foot in the door. Uh, changing the definitions, changing the titles, because God is a title, it's not a name. And that's how he confuses the Father, the Son, and adds the Holy Ghost. So, anyways, uh, this is all in my teachings, and uh, hopefully this... Uh, ramble on here didn't uh, disturb too many people I pray people are sharing the teachings anyways I don't care uh, if they share the videos but the teachings show them show them or excuse me tell them tell them show them tell them you got to break that autopilot that we put ourselves in because we are creatures of habit. So we just go in auto autopilot. So what goes in our head, we just automatically use, sometimes without thinking. And uh, gets us in trouble quite a bit, usually sins. So tell them, tell them, show them, tell them, breaks that autopilot in you. But they're scrambled at that time. So you feed them the information they need so you can get their attention and when you get their attention with the information then you can add a bit to get their curiosity and that's the way I do it uh, that's the way that Jesus showed me um, and I believe he made uh, me dyslectic when I was a child to slow me down and not teach me the worldly ways and then when I got to a certain age things started grasping about spelling and and that a little more I'm still terrible but um, because I do believe the English language was a language made for this time and deception but the two witnesses will bring the uh, confusion of languages back together again as Jesus promised, and the word will be taught properly. And I do pray to the Father that he uses me and my work is like John the Baptist 
for these two witnesses. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.